Hello again, everyone. Um, so for today's video, I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, fairy rings. It's sort of my theme for the day. You can see my t-shirt here. Fairy rings. It's one of those things that um, it's quite a large concept in the older folklore. Um, we find it in um, Irish lore, Scottish, Welsh. Um, in Brittany, which is northern France now. It's a widespread thing. Um, in modern popular culture, though, it seems to have taken a decided turn in a different direction. I really can't speak too much to the popular culture concept of fairy rings. Uh, I'll be the first person to admit I don't totally understand um, my my pop culture understanding of fairy rings is largely based on what I see on social media and uh, memes and things like that. Um, and I, it seems to be very much at odds with the older folklore, so I'm not going to try to get into any of that today, but I do want to look at the older folklore and sort of talk about that, give everyone hopefully a grounding in sort of the basics of this concept. Um, in the older and the, the traditional material. You can take it and do with it as you will, of course, as with all my videos. So, fairy rings, um, they're also called elf rings, fairy circles, elf circles. Uh, in Welsh, you'll see them called Kils um, Eitir uh, which just means circles of the fair family. Clearly, the big emphasis here is on circles, rings. Um, as you can see, the image of my t-shirt is a circle of mushrooms. That is sort of the standard concept of what a fairy ring is. Um, we do see them as circles of mushrooms in the folklore. We also see them as circles of darker grass or of dead grass. Um, in some folklore, particularly in England um, in the 12th and 13th centuries, there are references to fairy rings made up of circles of flowers, specifically daisies. But the wider concept that we find throughout the bulk of the material is mushrooms or darker grass, noticeably darker grass, or circles of dead grass. Now, before we really deep dive into the folklore aspect of this, I will say there is a scientific explanation for this phenomena. It's a particular type of fungus, of mushroom, um, called mycelium. The way that it grows, the way that its root system works, is it grows up in a circular form. So if you can kind of picture it like one big root system that comes up in this ring, uh, so they look like individual mushrooms, but they're actually all connected, is the way that I understand the science of it anyway. And the circles of darker green grass and the circles of dead grass are also connected to this. They um, indicate the presence of this particular type of fungus. So this is sort of the scientific end of things. The scientific end, however, does not negate the folklore. Um, just because we have a scientific explanation does not mean that we should just throw the folklore out the window or that the folk belief therefore has no basis. Um, if anything, I think the two can kind of work together, um, sort of explain each other uh, or work in tandem. So the folklore tells us that um, fairy rings are indications of places that fairies like to dance. There is a strand of the folk belief that says that a fairy ring, um, the natural presence of this ring of mushrooms or, or grass, is um, like a draw to fairies. That they're attracted to that place and that they um, will seek those places out for their dancing grounds. But the majority of the folklore what we see more widespread is the idea that when you find this circle of mushrooms or this circle of differently colored grass, it is because that is a location where the fairies have been dancing. 
and that their presence, their dance has caused this effect. Um, and again, scientific explanation already been gone over. There's sort of an ingrained idea in the majority of cultures that um, believe in the, the more otherworldly explanation for fairy rings, that they have a sort of sacredness to them, that they are, are kind of an otherworldly sacred space by nature. Um, in Wales and Welsh folklore, um, we find accounts of um, people talking about the idea that you don't uh, step into these spaces, you don't interfere with them, that damaging the mushrooms even is thought to bring about repercussions on a person. Um, and you can find some of this in um, the book, The uh, Good Folk, New Fairy Lore Essays, edited by Narvaez. You can also find some of it in the fairy faith in Celtic countries, um, and of course wider collections of Welsh, Irish, or Scottish folklore. Kind of fairy rings are a big enough thing, you're going to find them mentioned um, in, in the majority of folklore collections uh, at one point or another. So that said, there is certainly an idea in a lot of cultures that have this belief that you just don't interfere in these spaces, that if you find a circle of mushrooms, if you find a circle of darker grass, you leave it alone because it is a kind of sacred space putting that out there to, to begin with. However, the other aspect of this, uh, the more, shall we say, typically dangerous fairy folklore to this, is the idea that if the fairy ring or elf circle, Kelsia um, Terleteg, is still active, if this is not the remnants of a fairy dance party, if you will, if this is not a location that was previously used but has been abandoned, if this is something that they are still actively using, you might not be able to see them because they are invisible, um, oftentimes to humans. But if this is still an active site and you step into the circle or are drawn into the circle, then there could be some profoundly negative consequences for you. I will say that um, the folklore in Brittany, that part of northern France, varies here. Um, the belief there generally is that stepping into fairy circles does not necessarily have negative consequences, that you can do that and um, you'll be free to go later, nothing bad's going to happen. Um, so I will put that out there first. However, what we find in most other places, Celtic language speaking cultures, um, into um, even England and, and Germanic belief is the idea if you step into an active fairy circle um, there's really two ways that this will go. If you do not offend the good folk, if you know, they invite you to join their dancing, if they're pleased with you, then um, you will dance with them for what will seem to you to be a couple hours um, sometimes the entire night, and then they will let you go in the morning. Um, unfortunately for you, however, the human in the equation, when you leave, you will find that anywhere from a decade to a century has passed. Um, and in the longer cases, the, the cases where it's been a century, um, everyone you know will have died. Uh, there are accounts um, that we find, particularly in Wales, where the person leaves and goes back to what they thought was their home, encounters strangers, eventually figures out how much time has passed, and then crumbles to dust in front of everyone and dies. So that is one option. Um, even in the cases where it's a shorter amount of time, um, 10 years, uh, obviously your life is, is extremely disjointed then from what it was. The worst case scenario is that you entering the fairy ring offends or upsets the fairies who are dancing in it, and they respond um, either violently, um, pinching you or attacking you, or by forcing you to dance until you collapse from exhaustion or die. <laughs> so that's definitely the worst case scenario. Um, not that a hundred years passing and uh, you crumbling to dust from old age the next morning is a good option either. But it's kind of this deeply embedded idea in the fairy ring folklore 
that um, interfering with fairy rings is not something you really want to do. There's also some widespread beliefs with this, and again, this is across all of these cultures, that even people who sort of come away from fairy rings, um, come away from these experiences, um, who are rescued or who are freed, or you know, the fairies let them go, that there's still consequences for them, and that they often will then pine away, um, waste away, and eventually die because they can't reconcile their continued life in the human world with their memories of this fantastic time they spent dancing with the good folk. There are methods for rescuing people from fairy rings. If you come across someone who is trapped in one, if you come across a person who is dancing in one, um, if it's someone that is a friend or a relative and you're out looking for them, and find them in this situation. Um, putting one foot onto the edge of the ring and keeping your other foot out and reaching and grabbing them is a method we find in folklore. Uh, laying a rowan stick or branch across the boundary of the fairy ring uh, is supposed to break the enchantment. Obviously anything iron, um, laying a piece of iron across the boundary of the ring, or in some cases it's recommend tossing a bit of iron um, in amongst the dancers will sort of disperse everyone. Um, and I will quickly note here, because this always causes massive confusion, iron and steel can be used interchangeably. Um, steel is mostly iron, so in folklore we'll find references to both, um, and sometimes both in the same conversation. Uh, either one, in the modern world you're more likely to have steel at hand if you ever need to use this information. So. There certainly are methods to rescue people. Um, there certainly is a deeply ingrained idea that you would need to rescue a person. Um, there's not a large concept of voluntarily joining these dances. As I said, the folklore in Brittany vary slightly, um, where we don't see really these negative consequences with it, where, which we see in the other folklore, but the bulk of the folklore really emphasizes the idea that um, fairy rings, if they are in active use by the good folk, are dangerous and are not places you would want to interfere with. And even if they're not in active use, if they're, they're older, perhaps, they're viewed as sort of a, a kind of sacred space. Um, this is a place that the fairies were using to dance. And there's a certain respect that's given to that. Um, as I said, in the Welsh material, and again, this is discussed in that book, um, The Good People, uh, in the Welsh material, we see this idea that people would not um, step into the space or interfere with it, or interfere with the mushrooms. You wouldn't pick them, you wouldn't eat them. Um, and there was a belief, um, and again, this is Welsh specific, that if you damage the mushrooms even accidentally, that there could be some retribution, that the good folk might punish a person for that. So we kind of have this deeply embedded idea across the folklore that um, fairy rings are strongly associated with fairies, with the good folk, that they are locations that these beings like to dance. Um, fairies are very fond of dancing across the folklore, um, and that that dancing can be dangerous for humans, for mortals. That even if you escape from the fairy ring or are freed from it, uh, there are often still significant consequences to you. Um, and that we, we see these sort of multiple methods to rescue people uh, because of this because of this idea, this belief. So that's sort of a quick summary of fairy ring folklore, um, some of the different names for it. There are some different views on the continent. Um, I believe in parts of Germany, they're referred to as um, witches circles, um, Hexenzeka, I believe. I think um, that's a little bit out of my purview. I tend to focus more on the Celtic language speaking cultures, specifically Irish and Scottish, um, but if I remember correctly, 
they always tend to have the supernatural explanation. Um, of course, we do know what the scientific explanation is, but the scientific explanation, at least in my opinion, doesn't cancel out the folkloric explanation. It just sort of adds another layer to it. Uh, we, when we look sort of across the, the breadth of the material, it's definitely interesting to sort of connect the idea of fairy rings and the sacredness of fairy rings um, and this idea that you don't interfere with them, you don't mess with them, with sort of the wider respect that are given to the fair folk and locations that are connected to them. You know, we, we tend to be familiar with, or it's, it's more commonly discussed, the idea of fairy trees and respecting them and not interfering with them, um, fairy hills, things like that. Um, fairy rings, of course, are more um, temporary, transient, uh, but they still sort of have a little bit of that respect applied to them. That idea that this is a place that belongs to the other crowd, um, so it is uh, treated as some place that is a little uh, more than than mortal earth, if you will. Um, but as with anything connected to the fair folk, it has that bit of risk to it. Um, maybe that's where some of the respect comes in. So that's sort of a quick crash course in what fairy rings are. Uh, again, as I said, I know that in sort of modern popular culture, uh, they get treated very differently. Um, I see a lot of jokes about people wanting to throw themselves into fairy rings or jumping into fairy rings, then nothing happens and they're very disappointed. I really can't speak to that um, out of my purview and uh, I'm not sure what the, the actual belief connected to those jokes and those actions are. Um, I can only speak to the older beliefs and the, the cultural beliefs that I've um, I sort of studied and researched. So there we are. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, I think I've covered this as thoroughly as I can in what hopefully is a short video. Everything you never wanted to know about fairy rings. Um, the, the basic takeaway here would be if you see a full circle, it does have to be a full circle by the way, partial circles or crescents don't count. If you see a complete circle of mushrooms or darker grass or dead grass or very rarely flowers, that would be considered a fairy ring, elf ring, fairy circle, elf circle, Kelsey Tirol Teg, and um, you would want to sort of give it a wide berth. Um, if it's in your yard, don't mow over it with your lawnmower, <laughs> basically, um, and just let it let it do its thing. It will resolve itself on its own and eventually disappear. Uh, but for the time that it's there, respect it and kind of leave it be but um, understand that it's a place that the fairies go to dance or have gone to dance um, and that it's an indication of their presence. And if you step into one, hope that you have a friend that knows how to get you back out again. So everyone, hope you have a great day and I will see you again soon for another video.